Three, two, one, go. Hello everyone, this is Mary and I'm so happy to be back mm -hmm. among you again. I have decided to share a series of videos in order to enhance your skills for proficiency courses, in particular IELTS. Um, there are going to be, um, every, every, every week I'm going to release one video and we are going to start from one point and pursue it skill by skill and, um, and let's help you step by step to get prepared for um, proficiency courses and mostly, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's for, for IELTS itself. So, um, obviously, the proficiency courses are different, um, way different from conversation courses, and we are going to discuss this later. But I'm going to share these videos, which are meant and designed to promote you, um, to get, you know, to upper levels, um, either in English, in your career, or in your job, or for, you know, immigration, for continuing your education, or any of those things of those goals that you might like to attain. Um, but the point is, uh, we are going to focus mostly on IELTS, and um, I, I will tell you what the difference is between them um, a little bit, but we are not going to discuss the other, I mean, the other formats. Just in particular, we're going to focus on IELTS. Um, the videos are going to be shared through two platforms. One of them is the, um, the, um, the, the YouTube channel, uh, because it, I can share longer videos there. And uh, I'm going to share a proportion of it through Instagram, and the people would be, obviously, if they are willing, if they are interested, and if they, they find the content useful, they can continue watching them there. It's going to be free of charge for the time being, and I'm going to share these every week, and uh, I hope it works. I've been an English teacher for almost 20 years on different levels, and I'd be happy to share my knowledge with everyone or with whoever would like to, you know, enhance such skills. So, and I'd be so pleased if you could um, subscribe to the channel and also like the videos and share it with your friends if you think the content is useful and you can find it for, your, for achieving your goals. Okay, so the first question which is often asked and which is often posed is, what is proficiency course? What, what are proficiency courses? Um, we've got lots of standards and we've got lots of formats like IELTS, like TOEFL, PTE, um, many other exams, um, you know, but the, the point is they're almost all the same. So the difference between or among them is that um, it's about, you know, how the test is delivered or about which, which skill comes first, which one comes second, and how long does each one take, or, or many other these of, you know, these differences through delivery, but multiple choice is always a multiple choice, isn't it? So they're almost, you know, the same in, in the content is the same, and I mean the exams or the types of questions which are posed are almost all the same, but there are, I mean, minor differences. So there are basically lots of similarities and commonalities. I would say 60, you know, among 60 to 80 percent, they are the same. But the, the rest would be some specific uh, changes um, for each particular type of those particular type of exam that we have available in the market. So, um, so we, we would like to ask ourselves the first question, what is or what are proficiency courses? In fact, proficiency courses are different from conversation classes in English. And what the difference is, these courses are going to prepare you to go on to get promoted to way higher levels. You can go and continue your education, you can go to college, university, and you can immigrate to other countries, you can you know, apply for a more professional career, if you, you can get promoted to higher levels, to senior possessions, and as long as you know how to manipulate academic content. And so you are expected to be able to implement academic standards and formal standards of English through four different skills, which are listening, reading, and writing and speaking. So two of these skills, which are, so these skills are in all exams, you can see them. They might be able to eliminate one of them, but 
we, we see that all, you know, recent um, proficiency courses and exams that we have, they all have these four skills. So the question is, so we have two of them. Two of them are receptive skills, which are basically listening and reading. And by being receptive, I mean that you listen to them. And then you'd need to be able to implement or be able to answer those questions through the channels that you receive the information. So you read it, you will be able to, you're going to be able to analyze the data and then you're going to implement and find out the questions in efficiently. It means in a, you know, not, you, you, you don't have a long day for it. So you will have very certain amount of time for being able to answer those questions uh, in that period of time. So yeah, it's time bound and you need to be efficient. You need to be able to arrange your um, and, and manipulate or let's say um, be able to um, utilize your energy in a very efficient way. Um, and then attain those skills through practice, get some hands-on experience after you know what they are and how you're being tested. And then be able to distinguish what strategies to take for answering particular questions. And basically all of those skills which are almost the same among a lot of them. So we have two receptive skills, which are reading and listening, where you don't create any content and you are only the receiver, either through your listening or through, through your ears or auditory engagement and then in your vision or sight. And then you'll be able to analyse that content and be able to find out the answers. And two skills are going to be productive which are writing and speaking. And here is the point that you are, you, are a, you are required to be able to produce the content either verbally through um, your oral language or through, you, you know, in a written content, in a written format. So, um, and, and productive skills have their own difficulties because you also need to um, maintain uh, your natural aspects as well. But the difference is um, slightly, so basically general English or conversation classes are mostly targeted at, you know, I mean, helping people be, to be able to, um, to speak properly and communicate, um, you know, with people in that target language. But academic English, although, so the basic of Academic English, if, if, as long as you don't know how to make a complete sentence, you, can't, you won't be able, even if you know these strategies, or you know this by, you know, theoretically, if you know it, it's not necessarily a guarantee that you can implement those findings into practice. So you need to be able to attain those pragmatic skills, but before that you need to be strong enough. So by strong enough to start a proficiency course, I would say you need to be minimum intermediate levels. So intermediate levels means that you need to be either B1, somewhere around B1 and B2, uh, which is, uh, yeah, you know, if say intermediate, but obviously if you want to go for higher scores, like eight in IELTS, for instance, so you'd better start with a better base, like upper intermediate or advanced if you can start it, so you definitely go for better goals and you can achieve and accomplish higher targets. And so, yeah, what we see here is um, we need to have a base for it. So um, these these are not going to be um, are not meant to be um, teaching so many intermediate or lower intermediate levels, but they are mostly helping those people who think they are intermediate or they are practicing alongside language and they would like to also learn such things and and they would like to practice on their own to be able to achieve their goals in their own way. So the content is available. But I'm telling you that if you want to start a proficiency course, you need to have the minimum intermediate levels, So, which is, which is going to be useful for you if you want to go for, like, an IL 6.5, for instance. It would be attainable, but it is difficult. And uh, if you want to, you know, aspire, if you would like to go for a particular target, like 6.5, it's always recommended that you be ready for higher targets like um, seven so that your 6.5 is guaranteed. So uh, we talked about proficiency courses, but I would like to make another example about them. So these courses help you how to, you know, 
use language in an academic context, like a journalist in, in, in listening, you need to be able to take notes like a journalist. You need to be able to analyze the content at the same and simultaneously you're listening, you're looking at the questions and you're going to find out the answer. So now in this, in this channel, what we see here, one side, if you, if you can't understand what it says, so you won't be able to implement the other skills, will you? See, and, and if you just uh, know the skills, it's like the same. If you know that, but you don't know skills, you might not be um, able to do it efficiently. That what we, that's what we talked about. So by efficiency, I mean that being able to utilize the time in a very, with lower en energy, but being able to cover the materials. Or if you are producing con content through writing or speaking, you need to be mindful of the time bound uh, limitations that we, all, we mostly have for all of these proficiency courses. So, um, another difference, so what, what happens is this, you need to be able to produce the language, as I said, for those productive skills like writing, uh, you are, uh, you're expected to write them through, um, you know, like be able to write an essay, how to develop an argument, or how to write a letter. For instance, for general, for general module of IELTS, uh, these are the small difference. But the listening is the same. The yeah, we have the listening in both is the same, uh, and those are the academic differences among those. But for even for the listening, you need to be able to listen like a journalist because you need to be able to understand the conversation between them, or if it's a monologue, and then be able to take notes or be able to analyze that content and analyze the question at the same time find out the answers so yeah but there are techniques and it's not that difficult if you know how to if you know those strategies and if you your english is good enough to understand the first phase obviously you will be able to implement those skills and you'll get to uh, you know attain those um, skills that you are about to um, gain and accomplish. So, um, all right, so we talked about this and we talked about conversation classes, your, the expectations and in the world of academic, um, so we talked about writing, how about speaking? It, speaking exam, the ex speaking exam of IELTS, which takes around almost 20, 20 minutes, more or less, is targeted at evaluating different skills that you have. So it has three phases, and each phase has its, got its own target. So you need to be able to know, to produce the language in different formats. Obviously, being naturalist here is very important. You're not going to be, uh, because now it's the time that you need to decide what sort of language or word choice um, should be suitable enough to accommodate the needs of one of those particular phases or steps or tasks of, um, of the speaking task. So being natural is important, but we need to be careful not to be too natural. So by this I mean that if you do, if you follow up some idiomatic expressions, um, they're not necessarily, you know, being used that way. So you might not be very mindful of the connotation of those idiomatic expressions, or they might be slangs, which is not really recommended for IELTS or any of those academic standards because we don't use that language in formal meetings with in a very formal context with the video professors we don't usually use them yeah you can be friendly uh, it's, but it, it should be natural that's what I'm saying but so neither too formal nor too uh, like slangish or other types of like this way you shouldn't let it go that way uh, so the use of idiomatic, idiomatic expression is often not very recommended because of those things that I say, because it might create a certain, you know, connotation in the target language, so that, that which might not land the way we expect them to land. So um, we almost talked about the, the basics of these today. So you are going to be ready um, to go to university, to college. You are going to be able to write, you're going to be able to listen, be able to read and analyze, and analyze the content in a very short period of time. And you're going to need um, particular skills for your speaking, how to be able to, to address different sorts of exams or different sorts of tasks. And uh, what language 
should be natural, should be accurate, should be fluent. There are certain criteria and there is certain rubric that you need to be familiar with for all of those exams or all of those proficiency exams or anything you would like to do at the university, you need to know what the rubric is and how you are going to be evaluated. As long as you don't know how you are going to be evaluated, how are you going to be able to address those things? So you need to be mindful of the criteria and then get prepared to, to work on all of those skills step by step and um, you know and enhance your skills and so that you can get those um, particular scores that you are looking for so um, so this was the first series I mean the first video of the first series and I'm so delighted to to be with you again I'd be so happy if you please uh, share it subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends and um, I'll be motivated <laughs> honestly I'd, I'd be so happy if you find the content useful and I believe this is my responsibility as a teacher to share such knowledge and I would be happy if this is get promoted and it can help so many people that would be lovely and it would be amazing and I need your support for this content to be um, to spread this content for everyone with your friends and Thank you so much. So, um, wait for the next week. I'm, I'm going to start the first skill, which is the listening, and there are going to be series of examples, series of sessions. Um, uh, and I told you that I'm, I'm going to share a very little part of it through the um, Instagram because it, uh, it may not allow me to, to you know, um, or it might be difficult to pursue videos, long videos there, but I'm going to also do it through the YouTube channel so and I would be happy if you could please subscribe in both or at least through my YouTube channel because that's a that's a main channel for this communication um, I'll put these um, videos there and you will see them around probably now <laughs> okay thank you so much for listening and I wait for the next video which is going to be released next week thank you so much and have a wonderful day or evening. Goodbye.